Right, here we are. Well, let's fast forward now to 2006 uh, with the first one of the RIS transmitters of the 250 kilowatt version that was installed at Wolferton. This is a, a latest work version from RIS. RIS Radio Industries Zagreb in Croatia. It's an absolutely self-contained sender. It's all in the boxes. There's no bits in other rooms that are pertinent to the sender. It's all in the enclosures as we see. We've got one next door. This is sender 94 here. We've got one next door, sender 92, that's got the doors open. We'll go there in a little while and have a look inside that one. But this is the overview of what you're looking at on, on 94. You get a, a control panel, all um, digi digital now, of course. No meters provided. So digital control and digital status indications. You have to scroll through the menus to see things happening. The overloads that might occur are on the lamps here, or the interlock control, etc., is on lamps. Uh, we've given ourselves a, a crib sheet next door in the contactor area, but we've got a, a sheet on the on the door here that tells us what the um, what the numbers mean. Clever, eh? Very similar to the Marconi in that you've got servo control, drive capacitors and coils, um, and uh, very much like the old uh, B6124s, you've got a memory unit that knows where the settings are. And for instance, here it is, the tuning control unit. This one's set to 15480 kilohertz, or 15.48 megahertz, give you a chance to have increments as well if you wish, but uh, obviously it's five and 10 kilohertz steps. You see the motor settings here, and you can get into various bits of manual control or whatever. Enter frequencies on the keypad and drive it to where we want. We'll have a look at, at that next door. You've got the, um, the most interesting bits on here. You've got the regular AM LED. You can run on reduced power. You can run in AMC, which is Amplitude Modulation Compounded, or in the digital radio on DRM. So this sender is fully digital and fully able to do these, uh, these modes of operation. Got a server here, or at least a computer here that can cope with the uh, DRM input material. This is the modulation control panel for the transmitter. Solid state modules. Next door we've got it open, so we'll go and have a look at those. And um, we'll have a look at the coils, etc., in the RF section. Right, here we are in the, uh, in the rear of sender 92 with the doors open, looking at the RF section single tube in these transmitters. It's a 500 kilowatt Thales tube, again hypervapotron, considerable water supply through there. Bit of screening to stop any uh, RF escaping through the cabinet work, etc. There's an RF choke, which is switchable at various frequencies. The shorts will come in and short various sections out, and the rest of the choke is contained within the enclosures, within the enclosures here. This is to stop the RF choke, of course. That's the DC flow down to the tube that stops the RF going back up the HT line. It wants the RF to go through this water-cooled ceramic capacitor made in France. Spark back gap protection. Through it goes and hits the first inductor, which is a bit like a roller coaster. You can see the, uh, the short at the bottom here. There he is. Just so the, only this part of the coil is in use. The rest of it shorted out. The tuning capacitor for it is here, on the deck, water-cooled, and there's a neutralising capacitor to, fence, to send a small amount of RF back to the grid stage via this motorised section here, and it goes back to the grid. The tube needs about um, 5 kilowatts or up to 5 kilowatts of drive, and that's generated in this cubicle here, solid-state RF amplifier, lots of modules all combined together to give 5,000 watts on the carrier frequency. So there's no pen stage in this transmitter, just one valve output stage. The, uh, the grid circuitry is the absolutely industry standard now, uh, matching on a, a coil very much like a gramophone, a needle. Underneath there, it just picks up the correct amount of inductance. You can see bits of air blast cooling, you can see water flow, and then the dry belts for the capacitors from the motors below, or motorized inductors. So that's the setup of the RF stage. Fairly capacious, they don't make it uh, jammed in like on the Marconi. There's lots of room to get humans in there to do work. Again, we just come next door, you can see the uh, bit, uh, better view of the waterworks and the controls for the RF section there. And you've got access here to uh, water flow meters and temperature gauges and the key interlock system 
for the transmitter. As is normal with these things, all the keys have to be in place to, uh, to enable the unit to be powered. Nice visual indication of the, power supply, of the water flow next to the power supply. Behind these doors, or these, these sections here, is the main HT transformer. All self-contained within the transmitter. Okay, so that's the uh, access into the modulator. The rear of the modules. Here are the front of the modules. There's 48 modules for high power. And a couple of, um, well, the core steps. About uh, 800 volts each, on each step. The digital system will, <coughs> excuse me, the digital system will uh, let you switch as many modules on at an instant or as many as you don't want on at an instant to get the actual value of DC that you want at that point. They switch it to uh, a sort of 76 or so kilohertz. And within that back area is a 76 kilohertz filter, very large coil and some fairly large capacitors. But these are the modules then that do the, uh, the switching to make up the DC waveform for the AM and the digital radio as well. So you've got the anode modules 48. A couple of... Um, uh, there's three fine modules which switch at 400 volts. And then there's some modules in the corner here that work the screen grid for the output tube up to about 2 kV and there they are just sat in the corner there so the coarse modules the fine modules and the screen grid modules we're now back at the front panel where we were on sender 94 if we just carry on down here you just check the freak 17.715 megahertz we well, can now see the settings then inside here for 17 megs we're in the front of the sender now uh, the valve is behind this section here and the RF output then comes through notice the edges water cooled so that the RF doesn't burn the edges of the copper all water cooled it hits this first inductor there's one end of it shorts round to there this section's short circuited not in, not in use at the moment so only using that much inductance on that section through the junction into the two capacitors here motorised driven from below into the last pi section, here it is, and the coil tap is just round the back here, so a couple of turns in circuit here, and again short circuit to the rest of it. To the output feeder, which I'm sure you agree with me, is fairly substantial, 50 ohms coax, 50 ohm coax, well bolted down, uh, a bit more tuning there, if you look below you can see the uh, water feeds for the capacitors and the motorised drives. You've got the motor next door, then a, a drive belt and into the capacitor. So the output of this then leaves this section here, out through the feeder at the top. I'll just shut the door. There's the feeder at the top, 50 ohms. That progresses through the harmonic filter, which is in this section here. Again, to, redu to remove any frequency above 30 megahertz. Harmonic filter, just through to the back room which was the former modulation enclosure on the old girls that were here we're in the back room now the uh, feed is above our heads <coughs> or the filter is out it comes at the end into 50 ohms again just across the roof <coughs> 50 ohms down through a bit of uh, forward and backward power monitoring just some probes there and 50 ohms input into the ballon we need to get to 300 ohms balanced feeder. Uh, we're going in at 50, and it's a 4 to 1 ballon. And I hear you saying, the maths doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It's a 200 ohm output. Again, it's a tuned pausey stub with capacitors in here. So it's a tuned pausey stub, 50 ohms in, 200 ohms out, of a certain thickness of copper and a certain distance apart. That goes around the corner and goes horizontal above the transmitter to the outside world in the screened enclosure. But as it goes along, both the diameter of the uh, copper and the spacing gradually taper narrower and narrower and further and further apart, and eventually it gets to 300 ohms. And that then matches the existing system here at Wooferton. So that's the extra bolt-on bit from uh, RIS. So you can use modern 50 ohm transmitters into old-fashioned 300-ohm antennas.